pilgrim was I and a wandering in the cold night of sin I did roam when Jesus the kind shepherd found me and now I am on my way home he restoreth my soul when I'm weary he giveth me strength day by day he leads me beside the still waters he guards me each step of the way surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and i shall feast at the table spread for me and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life, all the days, all the days of my life. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, and welcome to Online Worship with Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. My name is Kim, I'm the pastor here, and what a joy it is to gather with you for worship this morning. One quick announcement before we begin. We are going to have a congregational meeting on May 15th. That's a week from today. Uh, we will have our congregational meeting immediately following worship. The purpose of that meeting is to elect a couple of church members to serve on an elder nominating committee. Uh, we need an elder nominating committee because one of our elders, Jane, uh, is moving and we are very sad. We hate to see her go, um, but we wish them the best of luck as they move to be closer to their grandchildren. And we are looking forward to seeing who God has in mind to fill Jane's shoes as an elder on the session. So we do need to get an elder nominating committee going. Uh, again, after worship next Sunday, May 15th, here in, in person, in the sanctuary. Um, if you have an interest in serving, you can self-nominate. If you know somebody you think would be good, you can nominate them, but please get their permission first. And um, you know, let me know if you have any questions, or again, if you would like to self-nominate and you just would like to let me know that ahead of time, I can kind of tell you what goes along with that. And um, we can, we're gonna get this committee up and going as we say goodbye to Jan and Jane and um, say hello to whoever the new elder is going to be. And now let us begin worship with our call to worship. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, calls our names to come and follow him. His voice, speaking our names, draws us to him. We follow without fear, for the shepherd cares for us. Our hearts rejoice, and we can place our trust in the Good Shepherd. Come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. Let us go forth confidently with songs of praise.
Let us now go into a time of confession. We'll pray first silently and then together in the prayer found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Patient and loving God, we stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us to peace and hope. We close our ears, but lament that we don't hear. We wander aimlessly, thinking we can decide the best way and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Let us place our trust in the one who has never failed us, who loves and guides our lives. Forgive us our stubbornness and stupidity, for we ask this in Christ's name, amen. This is the good news. We belong to Christ. He is the one who comes bringing life and hope to all. Because we belong to Christ, we belong to God, who is the merciful one, who fills our hearts with love. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. Before we hear God's written word, let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, how we thank you for this time together, time gathered up to worship you, to sing your praises, to pray to you, to hear your word. And we might not all be in the same room, but we are of one heart, and that is a heart for you, Lord. There is one God one body of Christ. And as members of that body, we rejoice every time we get to worship together. We are thankful for the technology that makes it possible to worship from our homes. And we thank you for your faithfulness in joining us every time we gather. Lord, today we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds so that when we hear your written word, we recognize your voice. And we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The people gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. 
No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll edit that. Backing up a little bit in the book of John, this passage that we just heard is pre-Holy Week, pre-crucifixion, pre-resurrection. None of that has happened yet. What we are looking at here is Jesus addressing his followers and those who are not following him. He's talking about being the shepherd. This is a great analogy for the time. Everybody would have known what it was like to have a flock of sheep, to keep a flock of sheep, very common. Shepherds would have been known. You know, these days, we don't really know shepherds, at least not in this area. Even when people have sheep, they don't hire a shepherd. The flock is typically not huge here in Alabama. But this analogy at the time would have been a good one, a familiar one. It's the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It's winter. Jesus is in the temple, and they're gathering around him. They're saying, come on, are you the Christ? Don't keep us waiting. Don't keep us in suspense. We want to know. This has to be frustrating for Jesus. And he answers, I did tell you, but you did not believe. He says, everything I've been doing, it speaks for me. I mean, right? Like, where have you been? You turn back a few pages and you see some of the things that Jesus has been doing. And he's been healing people. He's been driving out demons. He's been telling people who he is. 
not just with his words, but with his actions. He has said he is the bread of life. Are they listening? Apparently not, because they're asking him again. Hey, come on, tell us plainly, are you the Christ or not? And Jesus answers, I did tell you. And I'm going to keep telling you. The miracles I do speak for me, but you don't believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. Okay, we, if you're watching this, uh, if you, I mean, we're Jesus' sheep, right? Or we wouldn't be here worshiping God in a Christian church today. So we are part of the flock. We are the sheep. Listen to what Jesus tells us. My sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I love that. Not just that we need to know Jesus, which we do, but Jesus knows us. Right? It's that shepherd where one sheep goes missing and the shepherd knows it and goes out and finds it. Jesus knows us. He knows his sheep. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. This is wonderful, fantastic, amazing news because it seems like, it feels like sometimes there's a lot of things in life that are pulling us astray, that are distracting us, that are keeping us from truly listening to the voice of Christ. But even when we're not listening, even when we are way off the path of where we're supposed to be, even when we feel like we are lost, we are still in his hand. No one can snatch us out. Nothing can snatch us out. No distractions, no bad choices, no amount of TV or internet access can snatch us out of the hand of God. Super reassuring. But we need to be listening. We've got to listen. How do we come to know a voice? By hearing it. How do we recognize who that voice is? By hearing it. It amazes me how genetics works, how frequently our voices sound like our parents' voices. How our, their voices sounded like their parents' voices but you recognize the voices that you hear the most. Let's, let's, let's go way back in time. Before we had cell phones, before we had caller ID, remember we had the old timey phones that you would pick up and say hello and you wouldn't even know who was calling first. No caller ID, no name on a screen. You just had to say hello and figure out who was calling. Remember those days? And once you got to be good friends with somebody, you could answer the phone and they would just say, hey, it's me, and start talking. And you would know who it is. You would recognize their voice because you had spoken with them before. It used to drive me crazy when somebody I didn't know very well would call on the phone and just start talking and I wouldn't know who it is. I hadn't heard their voice enough. I didn't know them well enough to recognize their voice. And then there was always that awkward, I'm sorry, I don't know who this is. If, if we couldn't figure it out by context clues, we would just have to ask, who is this? We recognize the voices that we hear the most. I can pick out voices that I know in a crowd. When I go to a school and I hear a child say, Nana! I know if I'm that Nana, right? I've got a granddaughter in kindergarten, and when I go and there's a million kids around and it's grandparents' day and they're all shy, I know which one is mine because I hear her. And every time I call her house or every time I see them out in the yard, I hear that same, Nana, 
I recognize it. And not only do I recognize it because I hear it a lot, but it sparks such love and such joy every time I hear her little voice. I recognize it because I know her and because I love her and because I've heard it. We have to be listening to God to recognize God's voice. We have to have an ongoing relationship with God, numerous conversations where we're not just speaking, but we're also listening too. Before we can recognize God's voice and allow ourselves to be guided by it, we have to be having these conversations so that when we hear back from God, we know who it is, what it is. And that definitely takes some time. It takes that ongoing relationship. You know, you, you don't just pray once and then find that you can recognize God's voice throughout the rest of your life. You have to be listening to recognize it. If any of you were here on Easter Sunday, our sanctuary was full. We had lots of people here. We had tons of children. I, I think I counted 15 before I stopped counting. We probably had, I don't know, 16, 17, 18 little children in church and all their families, full pews. And probably half of those people were visitors and all of the children were visitors. Where'd they go? <laughs> where, where are they today? Because unfortunately, we haven't seen them since Easter morning. And that is not uncommon. Everybody uh, who has done any kind of leadership work in the church knows that Christmas Eve and Easter Sunday are your two big services. And the Sunday after Christmas and the Sunday after Easter are known as Low Sunday because it will be the lowest attendance typically that you have in the church year. Great big celebration, everybody comes next Sunday, empty pews. Why? And I, and I know why, I mean, that's kind of a rhetorical question. I understand that on Easter Sunday, some people are reaching back to traditions. They always went to church on Easter. They remember that as being a joyful, wonderful celebration. They want that for their kids. They want that for themselves. I also understand that sometimes families that are gathering on Easter, um, the head of the household will say, I want everybody to come to church. And so sometimes you grumble and you put on your Sunday best and you come to church, even though you might not feel particularly called by God. You were definitely asked by a parent or a grandparent. So here you are. But just coming to worship once or twice a year it doesn't give you that ongoing relationship. Imagine if you only saw somebody once or twice a year and then they called you on that old timey phone with no caller ID and just said, hey, it's me. How on earth would you recognize their voice if you only saw them a couple times a year, if you only talked to them a couple times a year, if you only talked to them when you are in serious super crisis how will you hear their voice? And there are a lot of voices out there pulling us, distracting us, and not always bad voices, but we've all got commitments, scheduling commitments, time commitments. You know, I've got, uh, you know, we've got work or school, we've got our, our hobbies, we've got our, the clubs that we join, we've got our volunteer work, we've got all of these things that claim our time, family time and me time, and I've got to run errands, I've got to do laundry. There's just stuff that happens in the world, and so our schedules get tighter and tighter and our time fills up. And so how often do we include time with God on our calendar? Is it a natural part of our day or do we need to schedule it? And there's nothing wrong with scheduling it. If you find that your day is packed out busy and every single night your head hits the pillow and you think, oh my goodness, this is the first chance I've had to be quiet and talk to God and now I'm so tired, I don't know if I can even stay awake long enough to pray and listen. Maybe you need to set an alarm on your phone to go off. You hear that bing 
And there's your reminder. Take five minutes. Take one minute. Take 30 minutes. However long, make it a general practice to be prayerful, to have that conversation with God. That includes you talking and just time of silence where you're listening. And God will talk to you in all kinds of ways. I don't mean to suggest that if you don't actually physically hear an audible voice in your ear, you must not be praying hard enough. God talks to us through other people, through events that happen, uh, the way things unfold in life. For, I mentioned at the beginning that one of our elders is moving. To hear her talk about how that all unfolded, uh, you, you just can't help but know that that God is leading them to their new home, their new church, their, their new area. And they're sad to be leaving. They're sad to be saying goodbye to their friends, but they're excited for this new place because it's clear that God is at work in their lives. God spoke to them in different ways as a couple, and now they're moving. And sometimes God works like that. You get this tiny little inkling in your mind, and the next thing you know, it happens so fast. Sometimes it takes a lot longer to that. Sometimes it feels like you're wandering in the desert for 40 years before you get where you're going. But God speaks to us through music, a song on the radio, through prayer, through that. Sometimes you just feel, you hear with the ears of your heart. St. Benedictine said that. You hear through the ears of your heart. So sometimes you are just in prayer and you just kind of know what God is saying to you without hearing an audible voice. Sometimes people actually hear a voice of God, but we have to be able to recognize it. And sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes I will say, okay, I don't know if this is my own ego talking to myself, convincing myself that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, or if this is actually God leading me down this path. Sometimes it's hard to discern, but the closer you are with God, the more you will recognize God's voice when it is at work in your life. And again, it's not just about us knowing Jesus. It is about Jesus knowing us. No one can snatch us out of the hand of Christ, out of God's hand. I and the Father are one, he says. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. Do you hear what Jesus is saying to you? Do you hear that you are loved? Do you hear that you are worthy? Do you hear that Jesus knows you. I hope that you do, and I hope that those words aren't in an argument with yourself or with others. The things that we hear about ourselves, the things that we say to ourselves are so often lies. I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not whatever this negative self-talk that we so often slip into when what Jesus wants to say, what he is saying, sometimes whispering it into our hearts, sometimes shouting it into our ear, you are loved, I want you, I choose you, you are worthy, just as you are. Jesus says, you are not too skinny, you are not too fat, you are not too dumb, you are not too wicked, you are not too, you're not too anything for God to love you. If there are areas in your life that need to be changed, that need to be different, if you are working, welcome. <laughs> this is a full club. We are all works in progress. And this is not to say that if there are areas of your life that you want to improve, that you should just stop. We always work to do better and be better. But the good news is we don't have to work to be better so that God will love us, so that Jesus will know us. We're already known and we're already loved. 
we've already been deemed worthy. I hope that gives you the confidence to be out in the world sharing that kind of love, knowing that if you go too far astray, you've got a shepherd who can guide you back in, knowing that God will speak to you as often as you are listening, and knowing that the more conversations you have, the more readily you will be able to recognize the voice of your shepherd your shepherd who will guide you and love you and lead you into green pastures and give you refreshing water to drink, that shepherd. That shepherd will talk to you as often as you are listening. As often as you are listening, you will come to know and recognize his voice. That ringing phone that you will pick up and God will say, hey, it's me, and you'll say, I know. That is the kind of relationship that we need to have with our shepherd, our God. Amen. Let's pray for and with one another. Quick reminder, we do have a Thursday evening prayer service. It's every Thursday at 7 p.m. You can find that on our Facebook page. Uh, we pre-record it, but it premieres live so that we can all be on there sharing prayer requests, um, sharing our joys, it's music, it's scripture, about 15 minutes long. And it is a great time to share any prayers that you have and also to pray for and with one another. Again, Thursday night at 7 p.m. And now let's pray. God of grace and mercy, we have so many joys. We celebrate, we smile, we go outside and we marvel at the beauty of your creation. We have friendships that bring us great joy. We celebrate birthdays and recoveries and good, a good diagnosis from a doctor. All of these things that bring us joy, you are right there celebrating with us. And we lift up these prayers of thanksgiving to you. You laugh with us when we laugh. You are with us always. And that is a good thing, because even in the midst of our joys, we also carry some burdens, and you are right there with your hands outstretched, saying, don't work alone, I am with you. We all have sorrows and concerns for ourselves, our families, our communities. We have concerns that stretch around the whole world. The war in Ukraine continues on and we are hearing such shocking, horrible stories of the atrocities that are happening over there. Lord, we pray for an end to that. We pray for peace and understanding. We pray for all of the world leaders who are playing a role in this. We pray for wisdom and discernment, and we pray that they will be bent upon peace we pray for swords to be turned into plowshares. And we pray that you will show us any role that we might have in making that happen. We also pray for all of the people who are sick in this world, sick in mind, in body, or in spirit. We pray for your healing touch, for you are the great physician. And we pray prayers of thanksgiving for all of the people that you call and equip the doctors, nurses, scientists, researchers, the data collectors, the therapists, the counselors, the pastors, everybody who has a role in healing our bodies, our souls, and our minds. We uplift them to you and pray that you will fill them with energy, love, imagination, intelligence, stamina when they need it, rest when they can get it. And Lord, we have unspoken prayer requests, those things that we feel like we just couldn't possibly share with another person, those things which are pulling at our hearts. 
Lord, you know what they are. You hear the groanings of our hearts. You hear us even when we do not speak. You recognize our voices every time, and we are thankful. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. the end of our worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you again next week. Quick reminder that we will have a congregational meeting a week from today here in the sanctuary immediately following worship. If you are not an in-person worshiper, but you would like to join us just for the meeting, that would be fine. We usually finish up um, somewhere around 1045-ish. And then people will go into the fellowship hall for a time of, you know, coffee and treats. And church members will stay behind in the sanctuary for that meeting. So you can always slip in just in time for the meeting. Um, uh, that would be perfectly fine. You could stay for fellowship or not, whatever makes you comfortable. Um, but if you are an in-person worshiper, please, uh, next week, please do be prepared to stay for an extra five minutes while we get this meeting um, so that we can have an elder nominating committee. But for now, for today, we're done. We're going to shut off our computers, turn off our phones, and we're going to stop and listen for just a minute. After the benediction, turn everything off and stop and listen for however long you'd like. And let's start making that our practice, to listen for the voice of God each and every day. He'll speak, I promise you. Be excited as we do this. Be bold as we go out into the world. For as we leave, we go with God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Children of the Lord said, Amen. Amen.